Right, I'm so um, pleased to introduce the first of um, two presentations looking at political and social protest writing, which is our module that we're going to start Year 13 with. And the work here is to get you really ready to hit the ground running when we start back again in September. It's such a fabulous unit to be writing and talking and thinking and reading about, because really it's at the very heart of us as um, a society now. You know, throughout the world, throughout the decades, throughout the centuries, people have always been protesting looking at how we live our lives and looking at what could be done differently, what could be done better. So these are four images that are taken from 2020, so you will recognise um, the issues that are being spoken about or being represented here. And obviously there are very powerful movements and very powerful voices looking for and demanding change. And if we go back 40 years to the 1970s, actually very similar issues are being spoken about and voiced and challenged then you know the Stonewall riots in the first picture nuclear power and looking at the kind of abandoning having nuclear weapons and um, we've got workers striking we've got women demanding equal rights all of this is still very prevalent and still discussed today going back to the turn of the century again these issues are still being spoken about women wanting to be able to vote the suffragette movement you will all know very much about that we have um, men demanding better pay, you know, working class men wanting to be rewarded and recognised for the work that they're doing. And um, the bottom two slides are all centred around the First World War. Um, firstly, um, demanding peace. And then secondly, when the soldiers had returned home, that the treatment of the veterans was, was pretty appalling. And so again, you've got people here campaigning, protesting, demanding change. All again are issues that we too would be talking about and speaking about today. Going back a century to the 19th century, again, issues that we would absolutely recognise. We have inner city, inner city poverty being represented in the first image and looking at, again, the treatment of the poor and the conditions that they're living in and what could be done about that. We have the movement to abolish slavery. Again, you know, kind of everything that we're talking about in terms of Black Lives Matters has its roots all the way back to, to the abuse of power here. The two on the bottom of the slide, you have um, the Hyde Park riots, London is challenging um that the, the kind of living conditions um in a lot of the slum areas and then finally you've got the Peterloo massacre in the bottom corner and that was looking for reform of parliament people wanting change and equal representation again you know kind of looking at how parliament governs the country which is, is is hugely important for us today we've just gone through a period where the government have had huge control over our lives you know they've locked us down they've restricted our movements they've even you know kind of come into our home and said you know you can't even hook those closest to you if they don't live in your house so again all of these issues yes 19th century but we can still see them seeping through to our modern day living going back another century to the 18th century again images that capture what people were commenting on protesting about the time workers still demanding better conditions better pay you have the storming of the bastille where the the french overthrew their monarchy and set up a republic a massive shift in their governments and parliaments the bottom two end um, we have the golden riots these were anti-catholic riots people challenging of different religions and then the the final one on this slide again a slavery riots riots people questioning challenging fighting back against oppression and then back another century to the 17th century the gunpowder plot you know we we, we celebrate this on the 5th of november today this has had a, a lasting legacy in our history but that attempt to you know overthrow parliament overthrow the monarch change the system of governments which actually ultimately did happen with the execution of charles i which is the next image you know we that the king was removed from his throne his absolute power was taken off him and then we had a republic we had um Cromwell, and um, he oversaw the country for a number of years and you know it was meant to be parliament it was meant to be democratic however that didn't last long and the last image shows the glorious revolution the return of monarchy although they didn't have the power that they once had so we can see kind of i could take you further back in history but i am going to stop here you know here we have the 17th century we have issues about power who has the power how are they using the power what if we don't like what they're doing with the power can we rebel can we challenge can we overthrow and again these are all questions that are massively pertinent around the world today so what does all this actually have to do with literature and what you're going to be studying? Well, as you absolutely know, any writer doesn't exist in a vacuum. They are writing in a world. 
and they are writing as a member of a society and they will be absolutely conscious of what is going on around them and their writing often very often reflects that the whole purpose of literature is to get us to question you know how do we live our lives what is it that we you know our society ought to be looking like and any literature that we read ultimately asks us questions about what it is to be human and what it is to live in a world and what is our role in the world in which we are living um, and so any text that we study actually could be seen as part of this genre because every single writer is writing within their social context and their historical time period. So actually what we're going to be talking about now and the tasks that you're going to be asked to do are tying in with um, three of the assessment foci, AO3, which looks very much at the context of writers when they are producing texts and how those texts are received by us as readers. AO4, which is all about the genre itself and social political protest. What is it that people are writing about? What kind of language can we be using to talk about this? And I've just put a word on the slide here, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, zeitgeist, I hope I've pronounced that properly. Um, but that's a, a good word for you to know, you know, how literature really reflects the spirit or the mood of a period or how it challenges that spirit or mood of the period. Finally, all of this ties together to bring in your AO5, your debate. What are the issues? What are they commenting on? What are they challenging? What are they supporting? And this is a lot of what we'll be talking about in class. You know, what opinions are emerging from these texts? What significances are we taking away? So for the course of year 13, we'll be reading texts and we'll be looking at whether they are kind of revealing society's ills, their problems and, and what they're saying about that, or whether actually it's literature that is actually opposing and challenging something, or is actually very conservative and supporting a certain view. The texts we read might be very overtly political, very overtly critical. Others might be more covert. It might be encouraging us as readers to, to think about it and take away. But ultimately, I think this quotation by this um, 19th century German writer is a, a key one for everything that's happening within this genre. Prose, literature is a weapon. And as writers, um, they feel that they have a role to play in changing society. So their writing, if it is weaponized, if we can see it commenting and challenging, and writers are sharp with this, they don't hide away from this, and hopefully change will happen. So as I said previously, literature that you've already studied and know does actually fit into this genre. These are the three texts that, you know, you you will have done one of them for your NEA. And actually, when we apply the critical lens, we can see the critiques that are happening about society, either overtly from the writer or the role the reader plays in interpreting the text and feeling for the characters and the, the situations that they find themselves in. This is also true of three texts that you'll recognise from GCSE. You know, Jacqueline Hyde looking at you know the rep repression and Victorian society and, and what's happening underneath the surface and, and what is hidden and not spoken about Inspector Calls is overtly political. You've done so much work on that. And Macbeth, written, written in 1606, a year after the, the, the challenge to the king, and looking at notions of kingship and society and what makes a stable society. So this is a genre that you're already well versed in and have read texts that do fit into the criteria of the genre. But in order to really succeed at year 13, you need to be kind of understanding a little bit about the history of time periods and, and what was the defining mood when texts were written and therefore what issues will these texts be exploring. Hence the next tasks that I'm going to be asking you to work on over the summer. So for the first two tasks, ultimately I'm going to ask you to form a timeline. Here's an image, this is not what your, yours is going to look like, not with this content, but to get you the idea of we're going to span a series of centuries and chart out historically, socially, what was happening. So when we have literature from those time periods, we can understand what it was that the writer was tapping into. And we're also going to be looking at how literature as a, you know, as a whole genre has developed and there are certain influences on literature over time. And so the timeline task will help you pin down the social political changes happening, but also how literature was developing in order to reflect this as well. The timeline is going to be huge, so you'll, you'll hopefully you need a big bit of paper or maybe have one for each of the centuries. Um, and map out on here what was happening, what literature was doing to reflect it. The next few slides will help you to 
to, to find out about this. Um, and so after you've listened to this recording, um, these are links to to PowerPoints where actually it takes you through from 1400 to, to 2000 and highlights key issues, key events, key movements, key political um, ideas or issues um, that were very prevalent at the time and this will allow you to map out that historical timeline so once you finish listening to all of this presentation you know exactly what it is you're being asked to do then follow these links read the information on here pick out the key dates the key words the key issues and use this to start to map out that historical timeline once you've pinned down the history of social and political kind of change from 1400 to 2000. The next thing is over the top, I want you to recall the different literary movements um, and this can sort of, um, each literary movement was in response to key issues and key concerns of society at certain periods of time and so I would like you to add this information to your timeline. The next four slides, you won't see them on this video but you will obviously have this PowerPoint and you will be able to see them on there and um, detail the different literary movements and, and what characterises them. So this information again, read through and decide what you want to transfer onto your timeline. Finally, once that timeline is complete, the last bit of kind of knowledge you need for AO3, but specifically AO4 and then AO5, is that the language of the genre. AQA has produced this word list. This is what they want you to be really confident with because they'll frame all of their essay questions around these issues and these words. So print off this, have it, you know, get yourself a new file over the summer, a social political file, have this in the front of your file because this will be hugely helpful to keep referring back to in class. But crucially, um, I would define any words and phrases that you're not too sure about um, so you kind of understand, well, okay, how, how is that working socially and politically so that you are 100% confident with um, this terminology going into year 13. So that's everything in terms of kind of core knowledge for AO3, 4 and 5 that you need to have prepared over the summer. You'll have a massive timeline, you'll have this sheet printed off and you'll have these words defined and explained so you feel really confident using them in year 13.